but you guys got another video here for you in this one we're going to be taking a look at how we can upgrade our laptop CPU uh, this one is the Fujitsu Lifebook AH531 now you can do this for other types of laptops but you have to be super careful because some of them are surface mounted to the actual motherboard itself and some of them are um, uh, it's got a socket where you can replace those uh, CPUs okay now you can also upgrade the memory uh, in some uh, very uh, rare cases you can upgrade uh, the GPU and uh, you can also um, upgrade the SSD or to an SSD or hard drive uh, in that laptop as well so the one we're working with is the uh, Fujitsu but this is the processor that we're going to be upgrading it to and this is an Intel Core i5 2410M and that's the one we're going to be putting in. It's the Sandy Bridge um, chip and you can see the release date was in 2011. Now it's still a very very good chip. The socket is a G2 socket. It's got a number of two cores and four threads. Uh, the important part when you're upgrading uh, your CPU is the TDP uh, for the processor and also the BIOS. Now, because uh, there, there is different models, uh, so you want to check the website for that particular brand. So, for instance, Fujitsu, Dell, you want to go to their forums and check to see whether uh, what chipset they're using and whether it's going to accept that CPU, okay, and also whether the BIOS will accept it. Now, if it does accept it, then obviously you can swap it out. So, I'll show you how to do it in this video. This is just not a chatty video. It's going to be me showing you how to replace it out as well. And that's going to be a little bit later on. If you want to skip to that, you can do. But this is the important part. So you can see here, Pentium B960 is the CPU that's in there. And uh, by looking at the TDP here, uh, you can see here we're coming all the way down uh, to uh, the i7. Now, they did do an i7 in that uh, actual model uh, which is really good to know because obviously that means you can replace it now I have seen people saying that they have put in the i7 2630 QM into that uh, motherboard and uh, it's worked now the thing that really worries me is obviously you're going to get more cores and more threads but the thing that worries me with that sort of uh, approach is the TDP is then going up to 45 watts instead of 35 watts so I'd rather keep it in the TDP range of 35 watts uh, if that's possible and you can see here the likelihood of that being successful is the percentage here now there's no guarantee of that obviously but this is what this site is telling you here and of course you can also uh, get other types of i7 which are lower TDP i.e. the 2640M does have a 35 watt TDP 45% likelihood of that working uh, with that um, architecture there now just don't take websites words for it you need to do a lot more research than that and uh, here is another um, sort of site here which is CPU world which gives you an idea of the i5 2410M and you can see here it's 32% faster than the B960 which is already in that motherboard so you can see we're going to get a really good boost here good performance boost and also we can upgrade the memory as well and we can even drop in an SSD into that uh, system if we wanted to and it will be ultra fast fast enough than buying uh, uh, another laptop so do your research here you can see we've got the forum for Jitsu here and uh, we can come down to here and you can see someone's asked that question already uh, but if you do your own research like I have already you will already see that it does accept a lot of processors uh, in there now again these are just people posting this stuff up so be very very careful uh, you want people to say they've tested it and it works and you can see here uh, my one is not mentioned uh, but you can see here they're saying that it will accept the 2410M uh, which is the one I went for which is sort of middle of the road now the reason why I went for that is because it was 15 pounds which is a pretty cheap thing and if it went wrong I'm not really worried about it but another thing is you can get the i7 which is this one here which has a TDP of uh, 35 watts let me just quickly go back and check so 2620M so if I come down here 2620M you can see that is a 35 watt and that is the one I would recommend go for rather than the QM version because that is 45 watts TDP and you will run into problems 
and you can see likelihood of that one working is 91%. Now let me just quickly uh, show you this other one here. Just want to come here and show you. So the difference is from 96B to 2410M is 44% here they're saying uh, boost. Now if we put that up against the i7 2620M against the i5 2410M you can see there's only a 19% boost and this one will work in there but obviously that chip is much more expensive it's 50 pounds instead of 15 pounds now obviously if you don't really care about that then you can go with something like this and uh, that will be fine and it should work uh, fine in that motherboard you may want to uh, flash your bios with the very latest version just to make sure but i had no trouble slotting this one into as you'll see a little bit later on now this video is already turning into a bit of a long video but it, it's really important to get these points across uh, because of as uh, people may want to follow this video and uh, they may fall short and end up having issues so let's have a look here at the i5s as well that will also fit i went for the i5 2410m and you can see the i5 2450m it was hardly worth upgrading to this and also the price did go up a considerable amount of money and for the price point is not really worth it in my personal opinion uh, for the little sort of boost that you're going to get so let's move on to the actual uh, upgrading process and i'll show you how to do that all in steps i'll take it nice and easy so you can see it's pretty straightforward and easy to do and the uh, fujitsu uh, life book is really easy to work on Okay, so hopefully uh, your laptop is upgradable. Uh, if you need any help, you can always pop over to my forum and post up your laptop over there and I'll see whether the CPU is upgradable. Uh, so obviously we have our laptop here. So what I'm gonna do is flip it over and remove uh, the battery. That's important because we don't want any power going to the motherboard. Uh, so I'm just gonna take the battery out. And uh, lucky enough, this does have a large inspection panel here, which we can remove, uh, which gives us access to the CPU. And uh, I think all laptops should be made like this because it makes it a lot easier uh, to uh, clean and also a lot easier to upgrade as well. Now, I'll be using a little screwdriver set called Tack Life. Uh, it's very cheap and affordable. You can get these on Amazon. I'll leave the links in the video description. Uh, but these are great for phones and also laptops. And there's loads of other sets out there that you can use. So let's just go ahead and remove uh, the back plate here. Now yours will be different if it's a different laptop, obviously, uh, but this is just a, a lifebook uh, made by Fujitsu. So I'm just gonna remove this back panel here. Now I won't bore you with the whole removal of the screws process. I'll just speed this part up and just remove the uh, back panel here. Now these are pretty tight to get out and they held on with little clips. Just make sure you don't break them uh, just pull it out nice and gently and you can see this is the back panel so we're going to be upgrading the memory here and we're also going to be upgrading the cpu in this one and you can also upgrade the hard drive as well and you can see the cpu is under here it's held on with four screws and also the fan needs to come off as well which is uh needs to be cleaned as well now the good thing about this you can see you get access to the cmos and all the other good parts of this laptop by just removing this back panel now you can see the buildup of dust inside here and this is pretty common now this one is not too bad uh, because the laptop doesn't really get used that much it's just used for tutorials but you can see here we can remove the uh, screws on the fan as well and replace the fan or even clean it out and that can remove any dust bunnies that may be trapped underneath this fan system here but i will give this a good clean out as well and you can use brushes or just uh, air compressed air if you wish out in the garden and just clean it out uh, but underneath here is where the dust bunnies get stored and it can make your laptop overheat now I've got some uh, memory here which is just going to give it another uh, lease of life by adding a bit of memory in and also we're going to upgrade that CPU from that crappy B960 processor now thankfully uh, this does have a socket uh, in here which is a g2 socket which allows us to do this and i don't know why they've moved away from sockets and making them uh, sort of surface mounted because it just makes it uh, much easier to upgrade things uh, they don't want you to upgrade they obviously want you to buy new all the time but this processor is still serviceable in uh, 2018 it's still a pretty good uh, processor it will do most tasks that you needed to do 
So I'm just going to remove these screws here. It's just four screws. The thing I like about these screwdrivers is you can hold your hand on it and twist it and it will remove the screws nice and easily. It's got a magnetic tip on there, but these don't remove. I'm just going to pull this out of its little socket here. They stay on the actual unit itself. So I'll just go ahead and remove these four screws. And uh, make sure that you've got the right processor for your motherboard, otherwise it won't work. And there's another issue, which is your BIOS. Sometimes the BIOS doesn't recognize the CPU and uh, you will have issues. So make sure that you do plenty of research before you attempt doing anything like this, because it could end up being quite costly. So I'm going to remove these uh, screws from the fan. Pretty straightforward. It's just three screws here. And you can see how easy it is to work on this laptop. Everything is uh, serviceable from this panel here. And you wonder why uh, manufacturers should, uh, you know, clash heads together and start to come up with a simple solution to make working on laptops a lot easier, especially for techs. So I'm just going to remove this one here. This is a nice final screw here. Now you can see there's a little wire here. This is for the fan, so power the fan. So I'm just going to remove that. Now if you forget to put the fan wire on, what will happen is it will give you a warning to say fan not spinning or something like that uh, on boot up at post. So you can see here now we can now remove uh, this here. So I'm just going to pull this up and then lift it back. Now I've seen these absolutely clogged with dust. And the reason why that happens is people run them on the carpet or while they're sitting on the bed or they've got pets in the house or they're smoking and it just gets really congealed with uh, nicotine and stuff. So you can see here already that the compound on this CPU is gone really dry and uh, it's not really good. So we need to replace it. So I'm just going to turn this screw and release the uh, CPU from its socket. Now be very careful because the actual pins on these are really delicate and if you damage them, uh, the, the CPU is going to be useless to you. So that's another thing when you're buying second hand parts, you want to make sure that it's from a reputable uh, seller and make sure you check all the pins because if there's any bent pins on there whatsoever, uh, it's not going to be much good to you. So I've got the new i5 processor here. So I'm going to leave the sticker on there. It won't hurt because that part is not going to be cooling the CPU. So I'm just going to slot that into its slot. There's a little triangle on there. You can't get it in the wrong way. Just follow the triangle in the top right hand corner there. You can see what, which is the side where the screw is. I'm just going to stick that sticker down there. That'd be fine. Okay, so we've now got our CPU in position. We still need to lock it down in position. We'll do that in a second. I'm just uh, going to put some uh, compound on here. Now you can clean the CPU if it's dirty with some isopropanol. I'm using some Arctic Silver here and uh, just going to put this on. I think it's Arctic Silver 3 or something like that. Uh, one of those. And I'm just going to squirt a bit of this onto the uh, CPU itself. Yeah, I'm just going to put a little bit no more than normal just to give it a good coverage. Now you can smear this across if you want to, if that's the way you want to do it. I'm just going to let pressure take place when I screw it down. I'm going to just tighten this and lock the CPU into position here. And uh, from here, all I need to do now is get the cooler. Now I've given the fan a bit of a clean. It didn't need replacing. I've just cleaned it. Now you can use isopropanol with a cotton bud if you want to, to clean uh, the actual fins if you're really that bothered about it. Um, or replace the fan altogether. But inside here, you'll see this is where the um, this is where the dust bunnies will reside inside here, and that's just like a big wadge of uh, foam or fluff. And uh, I'm just going to screw this uh, fan back into position and clean that copper pad. Now there's three screws here; I just need to screw back in. Now, if your fan is completely congealed with nicotine or dog hair or something like that, then you can uh, replace that fan. Now I've already cleaned uh, the copper pad on the cooler. I've got my compound on here. The CPU is locked into position. Just doing some final checks here and we can then offer this up. So just make sure you've cleaned that copper pad there, as you can see, and that's going to sit right on top. 
Now, sometimes you may see a thermal pad on here and stuff like that that some uh, laptops use. If that is uh, finished, you can always buy a new thermal pads and replace those. But this one doesn't have a thermal pad. So I'm just going to tilt this into position and drop it down straight onto the CPU. Just trying to line this up a little bit. And then once we get into position, we can tighten down the screws. I'm going to do them diagonally. Just get them into position and tighten this up. There we go. Now you don't want to tighten these all the way down. Just give them a little tighten so you get all of them into position. And then once you get all of them in, you can uh, go around and tighten them right home. So there we go. Let's just tighten these. Now don't over tighten these. And I've seen some people using electron, electric uh, drills and stuff like that. Um, there's no point. These screws are so small. You just end up shredding uh, the screws and stuff like that. So just use a hand tightener screwdriver. You don't need uh, electric tools for laptops. So let's go ahead and uh, put these three screws in to the fan. And this will hold it in position. Just tighten these up. And I'll leave the link for this little screwdriver set if you want one. It's good for phones and also laptops if you'd like to tinker with stuff. I'm just going to go around and check just to make sure everything is just, just finger tight. There we go. That's okay. So now we've got that in position. All I'm going to do now is offer up our RAM upgrade into here. And just slot this into place. Now this goes in at an angle. You just have to slot it down. There we go. And uh, once we've done that, we can also replace the hard drive if I wanted to uh, with an SSD to make it even faster. And I'm just going to plug in the fan now. Don't forget to plug this in. Sometimes you can forget, but it will remind you if you have forgotten, you'll just have to take it all apart again. So just push that down. Now we can put the uh, back inspection, inspection panel back on, just doing a final check, make sure everything's OK. And then what we can do is put that back on, put the battery back in and boot her up and see if she fires up. Now, I never upgraded the BIOS on this one and it worked just fine. But if you do have issues, you will need to upgrade the BIOS before you put your new CPU in. OK, otherwise you will run into trouble. So always uh, check. So I'm just going to clip this into place, snap this into position. And these always sound like they're going to break when you snap them down. Uh, but that's just uh, the way these things are. So I'm just going to put these screws back in now. And we're nearly there. OK, so I've got all the screws now in. And all I need to do now is put the power back in, which is the battery. Flip her over and then fire up and we can see whether we've had a successful upgrade of our CPU. So let me just uh, flip this round and uh, we can power it up. You can see we've got the BIOS up and we have our new i5-2410M that's been upgraded from the B960 and also we've upgraded our memory and it's give this laptop another lease of life. And the laptop i5 works really, really uh, fast compared to what it did with the B960 in it. Anyway, I think that's about it. That's how you can basically upgrade a laptop CPU. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. If you need any help, member, pop over the forums and I'll help you out over there. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos. <laughs>